I've done it, I've finished, I'm finally done building these nether tunnels. In this direction it's just the guardian farm. Everything down here and then round this corner and right the way to this portal is new. And then on this side, you've probably seen already this part here, if you've watched any previous episodes, uh, right past the raid farm here and then past the blade, uh, the blade farm and then past the end portal. All that up to yet was pre-existing and then this part is all new. Took me I think like 10 hours ish uh, around this corner and then to the desert temple portal right here. So that doesn't necessarily mean we're completely finished with these tunnels because we're not in terms of um, we have technical solutions we need to put in but in terms of being protected from the outside world from ghasts and stuff we're good so we can finally throw away this safety hat here oh my god the safety helmet now I can finally wear my netherite helmet oh I look so stylish I am getting magneto vibes though Are you getting magneto vibes and immediately the magneto costume is off and the safety helmet is back on because we found ourselves a soul sand valley with a fortress inside of it and that means we have better rates for wither skeletons here well let's jump down here Six, finally. Oh my god. That must have been like an hour. I need to do something... I need to do something a bit more clever about this, don't I? Right, let's see if we can find our way back home then. Ah, almost missed it. Where did I come out there? So, what are we going to do with these Wither Skulls? Well, as lovely as they look, they're not just for decoration. I will be creating some Withers um, to get some beacons. But there's something else I want out of these, and that is the reason I created this whole place, this uh, this area here, this is the, um, the Guardian Farm. 
and it was the Guardian Temple before, and I drained the whole thing. I started that whole project on the premise that not only would I be able to get these guys drops, but also be able to get squid ink out of it. And squid ink would allow me to get the very last die that I need, the black die. Um, but then I found out later that uh, you can't spawn squids in there, which was a real disappointment. So I thought, well, maybe I'll make a different area around here that could spawn squids, but that would lower the rates of that. So there is one other way of getting black ink in this game, and that is if a wither attacks and kills any other mob, that mob will drop a wither rose. And the wither rose, as well as being very helpful um, for killing other mobs, can also be converted into black ink. So that's what we're going to do. And when I say black ink, I do of course mean black dye, because there's no such thing in this game as black ink. Um, this is the problem we're trying to solve. So uh, we're trying to get every colour to be easily harvestable to improve our colour palette when building. Uh, these can be built from cocoa beans, the browns. Most of these can be um, taken from the colour farm, uh, which is just over there. And then the green is the cactus farm. Uh, white, I think, can be done from bones. I think that's it, right? Um, it's just black that we have remaining. And one of the very few things we need, aside from the wither to get these wither roses, is actually pumpkins. Would you believe it? We need a stack of these. All right, I've got my pumpkins. Now, the only other thing I need is two stacks of snow blocks. Now, I've only got three snow blocks. Which is fine because if you've got two snow blocks, you've actually got infinite snow blocks. Now, when trying to solve a problem in Minecraft, I often find myself coming up with a design only to find that the community have come up with something significantly better. And this Wither Rose Farm is no exception. It's by someone called Ian XO4. But I like to call him the godfather of Minecraft farms. And it's such a great design that I just had to have it. So if you're using chickens or something like that to get wither roses, uh, you should really go down in the description there and follow this guy's tutorial because uh, it's really nice and easy to set up. This this uh, wither here is perfectly safe here, stuck in that bedrock. You can't get out, you can't move, and he can't hurt you. Um, here I am uh, placing snow blocks, and the top dispenser is placing the carved pumpkin. And the bottom dispenser is cutting it straight off, um, leaving these snow golems. And the, the pumpkin is back in my inventory, so the pumpkins don't disappear. Uh, these snow golems are very reluctantly getting turned into wither roses here. And uh, at some point I'm going to run out of snow, so I can come in here safely and pick up the snow, along with the wither roses. Um, and then I can just rinse and repeat. It's really nice and renewable. You don't have to... Uh, go anywhere or collect anything more. Also, the wither keeps regenerating health from the snow golems. So, uh, if you get bored or if you need the nether star, then you can just come in here and slay it. Alright, and after about 20 minutes of that, 25 minutes maybe, I got my two nether stars, which is great. 
But then, yes, I have plenty of Wither Roses. These are going to come in handy. And like I said, these can be turned into black dye. Um, and also, I've got plenty of extra snow blocks. I've left those two in there for future harvesting. But I'm going to take these with me as well. So let's go back. Now, where to put these two beacons? Just a reminder, I've got two main areas of this base here. We've got this underground area, which is actually quite small. And then just up here, we've got the exit to that, which leads to the, the floating islands area up here. And I used to put my beacon on this little island here. I've since moved it away. I've since... Um, placed it somewhere to make it easy for harvesting um, clay. Uh, terracotta, that's the one. Um, but I used to put it here. But that's a mistake because I get the benefits of the beacon on these islands, but I don't get them underground. So where do you think would be the most suitable place for the beacon? I thought initially the most suitable place then would be like on ground level, right? Because then hopefully... The beacon would extend up there for the islands and it will and it might extend down into the subterranean part as well but that's not the case it's actually best to put the beacon down here because the beacon's range is different above than below it the beacon's range above it will be a full 370 something blocks which will definitely reach those floating islands but even with a full pyramid the beacons range below it is only 50 blocks so it's actually perfect for placing down here and getting the benefits throughout the entire base Lovely. Right, let's talk about these wither roses. In just about any mob farm, you want a place where you can make sure the mobs are dead and also a place where you can collect their stuff. And an, an often really good option for that is the campfire here. Because it's only half a block in height and hoppers will collect anything a block above it, campfire is a great solution. But one of the problems with campfires is this smoke. If you consider the smoke unsightly or if it's causing a lot of lag which I think in my world it might be um, you might want to try something else so why don't we use magma blocks well the problem with magma blocks is they're a full block in height and because this hopper will only get anything within this block it won't work what you could do with a magma block is put down a hopper minecart and there's no issue because the hopper minecart is actually larger than a, a full block so it's able to get stuff from the top of this one the problem is the hopper minecart is an entity and having a lot of these around could cause lag and they could also be difficult to move into the right place the good thing about the wither rose is that it could be placed on top of soul sand and soul sand is slightly less than a full block even though it looks like a full block its actual height is slightly less so you you've eliminated the lag you haven't got any entities it's a great solution for that you think there's a chance that this is causing lag it's certainly possible what I can say is it is unsightly now the downside to wither roses is that they only do half a heart of damage whereas campfires do more um, if I was to replace these with soul campfires, they'd do a lot more. But the good thing about this is that what's down here is only supposed to be finishing the job. It's actually the four that's supposed to be killing them. But if any of them are wearing armour, then the Wither Roses should finish the job. Yep, it looks like it's working just fine. 
And so I guess that's the Wither Rose problem solved. Instant Wither Roses. Brilliant. But Camber, I hear you interject. It took you an hour just to get six skulls. You're right. And that's why I'm wearing the safety helmet again. We're not done by a long shot. Let's go back to that nether fortress. So how could we get better wither skeleton spawning rates? Well, we could limit where wither skeleton can spawn within 128 blocks of us. All I'd need to do is place a slab on every surface, 128 blocks in every direction. So I'm just going to go and get about 100 stacks of slabs. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. That's crazy. I got thinking about this and I thought, if I was, hundred, let's say, 126 blocks above the surface of the nether, above the roof of the nether, that would create a sphere around me, the radius of which would be 128 blocks in size. And it would just scoop up a little bit of this nether fortress. And that would limit the spawning rates, right? Well... I looked into that and I found out, as I often do in Minecraft, as someone has already considered this, not only have they already considered it, they've also built a brilliant farm design for it. I don't know if you've heard of this guy. Some know him as the godfather of Minecraft farms. That's right, I'm stealing from him twice in one episode, the legend himself, Ian X04. skeleton skulls <laughs> and I haven't solved just one problem here I've solved three look at this bone output look at the coal output this is mad amazing oh man this might be my new favorite farm and I'm getting levels pretty quickly as well through this well I don't think it beats the um, the enderman farm for that Alright, I've been at this for a further, say, 15-20 minutes. And I've had to start compressing my bone blocks and coal blocks. Because it's taken up a lot of the inventory. Got 41 wither skeleton skulls, which is incredible. Um, but really, the, bo the bone meal from this is, like, astounding. Like, just coming here, I've repaired all of my tools. I've got all of this bone meal. This is by far the fastest way of gaining coal. And as a byproduct, I've got all of these as well. I'll show you what's going on below as well. The wither skeletons are going through the portal because they're trying to get to that iron golem. And then in the overworld, they're going through a second portal. Um, and then coming here to get killed. Alright, I think it's high time that I moved on to something else. That was a long time to talk about withers and wither skeletons. So I thought I'd move back onto this. This is the warped and the crimson wood farms um, of the last episode and I want to further decorate this place um, but before I do I need to get rid of a lot of these blocks 
Um, I want to do a couple of things here, not just decorate it, but also I want to re relocate this portal. I want to put it over here so that it's like a really nice and easy drop into the end portal here. Um, but yeah, I've got to remove all these blocks. Um, but thankfully, I have a beacon. So I'm going to set this beacon up and I'm going to put, um, going to put haste on it. Oh, a Nautilus shell. I think I could do one of those. Did I get it? I did. I think I've got a couple of those. I think I need like, what is it, nine, eight to get a uh, one of those um, underwater power things. Conduit, that's the one. Well, I've cleared out a little bit of space, so now I think I'm just about ready to put in the portal, but I need way more obsidian than that, so let's go and get some. Oh, I thought I looked at him. <laughs> Did I look at you? I should pick that thing up at some point, but I don't know where to put it. Where do you think I should put it? Lovely. Now we can get rid of this. Right, that's plenty of room for the portals. So now what I want to do is I want to create a very, very gradual transition to this ground level here. I'm thinking Three rows of slabs and then three rows of blocks and I'll come in afterwards and um, you know kind of mess this up because I don't want it to be too uniform in fact one of the blocks that I'm looking to get for this build is blackstone so I'm gonna have to get some more of that by the way I do realize that <laughs> I spent the last like three four episodes trying to get a good color palette right and now I'm just using blacks and grays <laughs> <laughs> I will make something colourful at some point, but um, this was this was supposed to be quite a gothic looking style from the start. In fact, let's go and get that black stone now because I've been meaning to go um, into the nether to collect some stuff anyway. That'll get me some fire resistance first, because you never know. Blackstone, there it is. Yeah, I've been meaning to come down here for a long time anyway to collect netherite because, or ancient debris, because in Minecraft 1.20, which is coming out, I think maybe next month, um, netherite armor and netherite tools are going to be much more difficult to attain because there's this whole system of uh, like an ancient book or tome or something like that see so yeah, i'm going to do a bit of blackstone mining and a bit of netherite or ancient debris mining i 
Okay, my inventory is pretty much full. My pick has seen better days. And I didn't get very lucky with the ancient debris. But, um, let's not get distracted. What we're here for is the blackstone. I'll have to come back another time to get the ancient debris. Now I just need to find my way out of here. Right, so the blackstone. I'm thinking of having pillars. Pillars of blackstone throughout. And the place they'll start is around this portal because we don't want to see the frame of the portal. And then I think... Blackstone stairs. Well, what are we getting somewhere? Need some slabs as well. So I was originally going to have this butting up right against a wall like this. Um, but actually, looking at it now, I'm thinking it might look nice just to leave that gap there. And that's a lot more digging. I think it'd be worth it. Yeah, I was originally going with like a church vibe, but now I'm getting like Athens architecture. And I'm not hating it. So... I'm wondering what to do about these. I was originally going to extend the columns for each of these steps so that it comes right down, but I'm thinking actually I'm going to I'm going to make these arches just go flat along here so that, so that they don't follow the stairs. Let's give that a go. Now, I did say I'd make these stairs a bit less uniform, didn't I? That's going to make a big difference. Yep, that does look better, but I think, um, I think I need to change the texture as well. I ain't got much of this stuff left. Well, would you look at that? Not bad, not bad. I don't know if I said before, but this was originally going to be like the interior of a church. But um, yeah, once I'd once I'd pulled these columns away from the the walls, I felt a whole different vibe. I'm happy with it. I know this is like really predictable at this point, me throwing like leaves and moss <laughs> on top of everything, but it looks good. I'm enjoying it. I like the I like the the nature creeping in vibe. I know I do it with everything, but never mind. Uh, I'm all out of blocks. Um, I've got plenty of blackstone, but yeah, I need more deep slate. And um, I'm all out of time as well. But obviously I'm not finished yet. I've got this part to do. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do up here. Probably just more of that, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed it, maybe I'll see you in the next one. Bye.